So what do you think about fake sugars? I mean, no, <laughs> no calorie yeah, sweeteners. Yeah, no glucose spikes. Yeah. Listen, it's always... Okay, so, so many things to say about this. And so much controversy these days about aspartame, etc. Sweeteners, there's a spectrum of them. Some of them seem to be better for our health than others. That being said... Even if you look at the quote-unquote worst sweeteners, I believe they're still going to be better for you than regular sugar. So I, I would never tell somebody who drinks Diet Coke to start drinking regular Coke because it's natural and it's better for them. <laughs> no, but you laugh. But the problem is with all this demonization of sweeteners, a lot of people are doing that. They're like, oh, aspartame is going to give me cancer. Therefore, I should drink Coke with real sugar. So I really want to help people avoid that change. We should not go from a, you know, a sweetener to real sugar that being said should you try to avoid sweeteners yeah why not but there are some new ones that seem to be actually beneficial so we were talking about allulose earlier yeah. which is super interesting and you were telling me that you had a patient actually yeah on one of my I've, I've done on instagram posting about allulose specifically non-gmo allulose folks and a viewer wrote in and mm. basically said look my mother was 72 years old yeah. and i heard your video and i put her on three teaspoons of allulose per day and she's a good sport she was a diabetic she was injecting insulin twice a day mm -hmm. and now she is off of insulin and she has normal blood sugars and thank you for that great trick so how does allulose work exactly allulose actually got the first fda approval as a prebiotic sweetener and i think that in itself is important because as i write in gut check so much of what's happening to us is because our microbiome is a desert wasteland and yeah. it should be this incredible tropical rainforest <laughs> and it should be uh, they should be eating a lot of the starches that we eat, particularly yep. resistant starches. Mm -hmm. And they're not there anymore, for one thing. So I think giving these guys something to eat is a really good thing. Uh, the other thing that's been shown in human studies is that it will reduce blood sugar spikes. And I for years now, I've been putting allulose in my black coffee, not because I want it sweet, uh, but because it'll bring down blood sugars. And Ben Greenfield talks about his experience with that. So I think it's actually a real observable phenomenon. Mm -hmm. I think uh, David Promiter has called it nature's ozempic, mm -hmm. uh, which might be a little powerful. Does it act on GLP-1? It does act on GLP-1 because it actually stimulates uh, bacteria mm -hmm. to make GLP agonists. Yeah. yeah. And again, again, to me, it all comes back to you got the right bacteria, mm -hmm. uh, everything gets a whole lot better. Speaking of which, I love what's called the gut-centric theory of mm. hunger. Mm. And there was a cool experiment in China a few years ago, taking volunteers and putting them on a 14-day water fast. One group, nothing but water. The other group, nothing but water, but they got 100 calories a day of soluble fiber huh. unabsorbable yeah. by us yeah, yeah, yeah. but feeding the gut bacteria cool the that group had no hunger ah uh, yeah and the other group uh, yeah. for a few days at least were really hungry yeah i like that because and i'm sure you've seen this in your in yourself in your your studies if you give the bacteria what they need to eat they text message the brain saying hey all good down here we yeah. we got our needs met you and don't have to go look the other way also happens so if you give your bacteria way too much sugar or things that are going to create an overgrowth of the bad ones you feel super hungry oh, so yeah. sometimes i'm going to a nice dinner or whatever and i'm having a lot of cake in the evening a lot of sugar like something very sweet and i wake up in the morning with painful hunger pangs which i usually never get and i'm like that's my gut bacteria for sure yeah. there is no other reason than i ate a way too much sugar last night 
All right, everybody wants to know, since you're French, how do you guys get away with eating all of these carbohydrates, like a croissant, like a baguette, <laughs> and remain thin? I mean, come on. <laughs> the French paradox? Yeah. I think the vision of the French diet is a little bit wrong. So, yes, I mean, there is bread, but also French people buy fresh produce every single day. They cook at home, they eat together, there's no seed oils, there's very little junk food. We take time to eat, we're not watching TV as we're eating. So you, you could focus on like how they're eating croissant and staying thin, but you could also focus on the fact of, oh, look at all these other behaviors that they're exhibiting that are causing the health. So I think that's an important differentiation. We do a lot of healthy things. And yes, we also eat bread and croissant, but that's not really the point for me. The point is all the other stuff. You bring up a really good point with that. There there are no preservatives. You go get your croissant every yeah. morning. You go get your baguette every morning. You go morning. get your vegetables your vegetable, every day. Yeah, right. They're in every single neighborhood, there's yeah. 10 different places where you can buy fresh right. produce on the way back from work. You just stop by, the, you know, you go to the cheesemonger, you buy some cheese, you go to the produce guy, you buy some asparagus, you go to the butcher, and then you go home. Everybody does that. You know, there's yeah. the, the big supermarket chains are not as prevalent. We have small little local producers and we go there every day. So the quality of the food is very different. I think in my first book, I wrote about this rather humorous um, we were in Paris where we spent a lot of time and we had a very early morning flight back to the States. And so we talked to the concierge and said, you know, could could we get, you know, something for breakfast at four o'clock in the morning and maybe maybe some croissants. And he looked at me and my wife. He said, oh, monsieur, I, I could not do that. Yeah. He said, because it will not be available. Yeah. I said, well, you know, yesterday. Oh, monsieur. Yeah. <laughs> he was apoplectic, but yeah. I could even ask for such a thing. You have to thing. wait until 6 a.m. Yeah. until the boulangerie opens. Yeah. You can't have yesterday's yeah, croissant. Like, yeah, yeah. Ew. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. yeah, everything is fresh. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, of course, you know, we make this bread that will last for years um, yeah. because of the and all of our bread is sourdough disruptor. as well by the way that well you know? it's actually fermented yeah actually I mean, fermented. actually fermented yeah, yeah, yeah. and we talked off camera you don't have much glyphosate over no. there roundup mm -hmm. and it makes a big difference and the seed oils yeah and the seed know? oils yeah. it's just yeah it's not the same world yeah uh, so that's how you do it huh? <laughs> and also lots of wine and lots of cigarettes that's how we do it <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up. We won't go there on today's episode. Uh, but yes, my wife is pretty fluent in French, so we spend a lot of time in France. And it's fascinating. You literally, whether you want to or not, will spend two hours eating lunch. <laughs> and it, seriously, mm -hmm. and we do. And, you, you know, back in the good old days, when, you know, I was the ugly American. Why aren't they bringing me the check? I'm, you know, I want to yeah. go. My father used to embarrass you. Bring us the check. And you know, they won't. And we've learned that this is, you, know, you accept this culture. And in school, for example, you get a 90-minute lunch break Whoa. as a kid. So you go to school at 8.30 until 12, and then you get an hour and a half break, and then you go back to school from 1.30 to 4.30. That's just how it works. That's the pace. Are we overpacing ourselves in the United States? I mean, you, <laughs> you live here as well. I think it's difficult because there's not such a deep food culture here. Therefore, it's very easy to get brainwashed by marketing messages and the, the food landscape we live in. So with, with this work and with these hacks, I'm hoping to bring to light some of these very easy cultural and somewhat European habits and to explain the science behind them so that everybody can apply them. All right. And you put this into practice. It's one thing to say, OK, here's what you do. You did an experiment with mm -hmm. 2,700 participants. Yeah. Tell us about that. Well, all the hacks are based on clinical trials and studies that I haven't run, right? I was just looking at all the research and synthesizing it into these tips. Before the second book, I thought, wouldn't it be cool to run an experiment? Now, for all the scientists listening, no control group, no placebo, no randomization, right? It's just an experiment. But what I did is I recruited 2,700 people and I got them to do the four-week method before the book came out, actually. And I got feedback on all of the recipes, etc. So... Here are the results. So during these four weeks, they just did the savory breakfast, vinegar, veggie starter, and movement. And the rest of the time, 
They did whatever they wanted. They ate, they drank, whatever they wanted, right? After the four weeks, 90% of people were less hungry. 89% of people reduced their cravings. 77% of people had more energy. 58% were sleeping better. 58% said their mental health had improved. 46% said their skin improved. And 41% of people with diabetes improved their diabetes numbers. Just by adding these four hacks in, not changing anything else. So if that's not encouraging, I don't know what is. More amazing episodes just like this one. Watch now. My new go-to is allulose. Not because I make it. I make it because I was so impressed using allulose for the last year and a half that I said, we've got to offer this to Gundry MD customers. 